Right then, we're going to go underneath and start this from the back. So it should get easier as we go along. And it's not going to be the world's best job this, but it is going to be a good a job that's good enough to get Mocking D fixed and back on the water. Definitely needs another coat, especially when it's been undercoated. You can see that it need, you know, she needs another coat. But look, already she's looking pretty damn good now. Let's go and have a 10 meter back look. From here you wouldn't know now that she's been painted or redone. A little bit there, let's just dab those bits while we're at it. Yeah. So that's one job done. These are new uh, mooring blocks. This is what the guys make. And then they sink them into the water and onto that they put a chain. And on the top of that chain will be a mooring buoy. And you moor up to it. And you know, they're pretty, they're so heavy. And I think they join the blocks up as well. Um, well, you can do that on moorings and, you know, for extra security. Um, and yeah, that's how you do a mooring. Aha. Aha, these will do. Oh, brilliant. So I can borrow these because they're not doing anything. There we go. <laughs> Try and do this with, I can't do this with one hand, so I'm going to use, take this one and this one, that should be enough. We've got everything out, everything out the boat that we need out the boat. A nice step there. But look, actually, what's kind of bad news but good news, perhaps, is how much water's in the boat. Now, if the boat was rocked all the way back, that would mean that there's probably no leak in the back here. But two things, the leak may be in the front. Uh, you know, two big culprits with the lugger are the bolts that hold, the bolt that holds the, the centerboard pivot bolt. That's a big culprit. It wears and eventually cracks. Um, and then also the water coming out here. Now, I don't think these buoyancy tanks are sealed at the sides. I'm pretty sure water can get in underneath. I'm almost certain of that because you could see when there was water getting in, it was getting in. So first thing we should do is dry the boat off at the back here. I'd say from say here backwards, and just double, triple check. There's nothing coming in or dripping out the back. Dried all the scuppers out so they're totally dry. Because that, if you've got something coming out here, it'll come down onto the chines and kind of leak. And I've dried the whole hull of the boat on the outside. Now at the moment, there's water, as you can see, you know, into there. I think, well, that side is where we had the leak originally. So we may have to turn the boat round because we are on a bit of a hill here to, to check that. But look, we're going to do it slowly but surely. You know, I can't see any leaks. And if the boat has been rocked back and that much water's in there, you know, the rate it was coming in, um, you'd, you'd definitely be seeing a drip. But look, there's apps. Ooh, there's one there, look. <laughs> one in the middle there. But that was like one off, I think. What's interesting about leaks are that, oh yeah, there's another drip there. But what's interesting about leaks are, they're much worse when you put the boat in the water because all that 600 pounds or I think 380 kilos of displacement that goes on the hull, um, you know, is, is a lot of pressure and it will force the water through any hole a lot more than if you fill the boat up. But at least this gives us an idea. I mean, I saw a couple of drips. I've not seen two any since. There. 
so there's a drip there so let's see if we can just find out where that's coming from and maybe dry that off as well just dried off you can just see where there's a little bit of water seeping down there in front of the rollers hopefully let me see if I can get you closer to that I only gave it I only give it a rough dry but there you can see it just seeping down now that's the drain plug it's not a hole in the hole that's the drain plug uh, that's interesting isn't it that that's come back that is interesting is that enough to be worried about Right, so I'm under here, and look at this. I'm now playing with the little, this is the base plate for the rudder. This is the rudder slot here. And look at this. If I lift that up, if I put it down, it seems to stop a bit. If I put it up, something, that's more than just water, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Yeah, if I do that, that's a leak. Oh, that is very interesting. That is worrying, isn't it? And that's probably what we need to look at. What's annoying is we're going to have to probably take this whole wooden band off. Okay, so let's try and find more leaks. Hopefully we won't find any. So I think rather than move the boat, we'll fill it up with water a bit more. So we're going to get the floorboards out. And then we're going to fill it up good old Lake Barla water. Don't know how high those little bolts or the, the swivel pin is in the centre board. But remembering it not being that high, you can feel for it. Now what you do, you can feel for the, the bolt. There's two bulbous parts of fiberglass. Now this has had the reinforcement done and you can feel them either side. So they're, they're almost, they're what? Three or four centimetres from the bottom of the deck. So they are completely filled with water. Now, what we can try and also do, but it's going to be very difficult while on the trailer, is try and see if we can see uh, any wear in them down this slot. Now, you might have to take my word for this. I'm trying to move quite slowly. Whoop. Because she's not only slippy here, <laughs> she's a bit, uh, yeah, she's uh, a bit full of water. So I can move this, I can move it to one side. And then we can try and see if we can see those, that bolt. Unfortunately, this lovely gasket I put in is not helping my visibility, but I can see it. It doesn't look very warm, to be honest with you. It, what it literally does is over time, the little pin that this pivots on will actually just, with the weight and if you knock your rudder, it will just be forced down through the fiberglass. And obviously, you know, um, that ultimately creates a, a crack and it's a one of the things you're supposed to check for on this and I did have a good look when I bought the bow and it was fine so I would be surprised if it was that so when I go and have a look underneath the boat I have already had a quick look and there's nothing dripping um, however one big test is to check that the crack we previously um, fixed is okay as well and to do that i've either got to fill the boat right up or i think what would be better is to somehow tilt the boat so we get it on we'll, we'll get her towed and we'll drive her around so where we've got a really good angle down there uh, and we'll see if we can get that water to sort of seep in and out but i think we found our crack to be frank i really do the uh here we are at the bottom of the boat never realized that looks Remember that scarfed in? No, no, that's just where it joins that wood. And I mean, she's bone dry. She's absolutely bone dry. So that centerboard 
casing would be here and you you can feel the centerboard it starts the slot starts there so you would be feeling water come through there and there's nothing there at all nothing we've got the boat tilted right forward ah no so we have well it's interesting this so let's go around the other side why this is interesting is you may just be able to see at the front of that rudder stop there's two like little screws sticking out can you see and do you know something they used to stick out a lot more because i put some silicon on them and i am wondering because i've had a few just niggly problems with the rudder recently getting it in and out i wonder if the bottom plate so there's a there's a brass plate similar to this at the bottom i wonder if that's just got a bit knocked uh and it's just got a bit loose and because it's loose it's harder to get the rudder in because it's harder to get the rudder in you knock it a bit more and i wonder if we've done that and i wonder if it's those screws that have come through now i've seen on another lugger the same thing the screws just come through now all we need to really do is fiberglass over those to be frank and it should be fine but that is interesting isn't it actually so we are sort of starting to buy slowly but surely we are starting to work this out um so we have got water over those screws uh, and sure enough i think you can see the drips coming out still and if we play about with that i think you're going to see the drip come out more so i'm happy about well i'm not happy but i'm happy that that's that's that so let's get the boat on the on the van and let's get her moved about a bit and let's see if we can just get a sort of yeah just tilted the other way really that would be the next thing right i got the boat that's that's where we were and we just come around here so we're on this slope now see all the water's now severely gone over there now that should be enough to get all the water in that other just to check the other crack you know what i know it, this sounds a bit overconfident i guess but i'm gonna put it out there i'd, I'd be surprised if this crack had failed because I fiberglassed this so well and took my time and it was such a great job. It is feasible that this has re-cracked it, but I really, really doubt it. If you look in here, look, the water kind of gets under, I don't know how it gets under there, but it definitely gets in. I'm just looking in here and you can clearly, clearly see these screws were pointing out. You could you could jab your finger on them, um, and you know, and that side, and you could feel that plate was loose underneath. So this from here, I mean, I'm looking at it through water, but it looks in good nick. There's nothing kind of wrong with this. Um, I think it's these, and I think if we just fiberglassed over those, it may solve the problem. But the next thing we're going to do is look down the the rudder slot uh, and see what we can see down there so hopefully you can maybe see down there yeah there you go so there's well you can see down there I can't now <laughs> but so I think this flagpole might be long enough yeah it is you can just sort of see how how um, how loose they really are yeah look look at that look you can see it moving oh that, in fact that grabs it really well look and i think that's what it is and it's just coming through those screws uh hopefully i can get some advice and the advice will come back to me quite quickly so we're letting the water out now um now this central band there's a screw there there's another so i don't think the screws are covered at all and there's the next screw is there just beyond the drip I'm thinking if we can undo those, there might be just enough give in that wood to just pull the wood down. That's all we're gonna do. 
and get a little screwdriver in something that can tighten that plate up and then what we'll do is fiberglass it from the inside um, I've just removed the box so I took the screw out the front which was in fairly tight and I realized the screw at the back wasn't even fastened in oh ah it was fastened in but it's taken the block with it ah that's a bummer so you can see how can you see that you can see how loose this was I think this has done a good job of keeping the water at bay but this was loose so water was just getting in now I didn't realize something I drilled a hole here into this block and never put a screw in uh, did I do the same thing I did here but it's blocked with some stuff and I think that's why the battery box was filling up right I've got enough water out of here that for now I want just enough water in here so I can tip the boat back and we can just get that leak going and what I want to do is just stick well I'll do that now I can use this this um, butyl tape I'm hoping I can just stick a bit of this in these holes just to see if that will stop the leak and we'll know it's those two screw points so we're back where we started hey I should have recorded that reversing I was like magnificent trailer reversing best I've done <laughs> anyway you can see all the water's pouring back those little bits of um, bitumen butyl tape are definitely fully covered so Let's go and check that, uh, that gap, that drip from down here now. First test is just to give it a test, see if it's still leaking. Uh, well, and then we're going to fiddle. Now, if we fiddle with this, it might move the, it might move the, bo the bolts anyway which i'm a bit worried about the uh, sorry the screws might move this doesn't feel like it's screwed in at all on on the back you can see though look how much better that is let me go and check see if the butyl tape has moved or been compromised so the butyl tape did get a little bit compromised as i pushed it up so we're gonna try it and reach again. See again, this is not dripping at all now. So let's try and work out what we're gonna do with this and then hopefully get a fix today. We've got her tilted all the way forward so the rear is fully dry. Look all the blooming sand and everything in her. Need to give her a good old clean, don't we? Um, and I've got it tipped all the way forward at the moment and we've got two tires under the back. So, so I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna wait for some advice while we, while we wait for that, we'll crack on with some other stuff. So I'm just giving this box the once over. This has been literally just on the floor, submerged in water the whole time I've had it. And it's looking fine, isn't it? It's looking great. Um, then here's the box. Yeah, <laughs> we, we never had a hope. There's like two holes in the bottom and then that screw was probably loose there. But I think this hole is more than enough to have uh, caused an issue for the box. So I want to get this sealed up so we can then seal these up and then this will be sealed because I've noticed, especially on the sea, think everything's just getting wet in here. Um, we can always pull these out, say if we're filling up with water a bit, we want to just put a bit back, for some reason we can. And obviously we need to undo these plugs for the drain plug to work. But at the end of the day, we need to block this up. Now at the moment, this pipe here moves around and it ends up sort of over here. So what I'm doing, actually it does bilge better when it's directly underneath. So I squeeze that in there, but I think with the bilge pressure, it probably pops out. So I might have discussed this when we're in the boatyard. I thought if I could put a block there like that, probably that would hold that in place there. 
Um, so yeah, I can think that's maybe there. If we do it like there, so it's kind of out the way of here a little bit. So what we need to do is just get the paint off here. And then, so the paint needs to come off here so we can get a good fix with the epoxy. And then we're gonna epoxy that down and give it a good old lathering as well. I'm sure it'll be fine. So let's do that now. So I'm just using a wire brush because I want to try and use this. Oh, that's going to be good, yeah. And then that will maybe move to there. Maybe push it up a little. Yeah. So we can move this out now and actually move, put that there. We know where it needs to go. So I'll do a little bit more this side. Oh, that paint stinks. It's acrylic paint, isn't it? That, uh, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like acrylic paint. Oh yeah, look, and it's sort of melted a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. Right, let's give all this a clean. So I've decided that I'm gonna put a dollop of um, thickened epoxy on these because I'm pretty sure this is where it's coming in. I've checked the whole rudder here and it's fine. My only issue is, is if these screws come out or they create any more issue, you know, getting looser because they're only gonna get looser and maybe they re-crack this. I don't know. Um, but I think I need to repair the boat to a point because I don't think I'm gonna get an option otherwise to fix it. So I've mixed up some quite thick, it's one, one pump with two 404s and you can basically spatula this on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pop a little bit on each side of here and just sort of spatula it on so it kind of blocks it and I'm actually we're gonna wait when that cures I'm gonna fiberglass over it so it's gonna look a little bit crappy but I need to make it bigger so if the screw decides to want to come in a bit more or out a bit more we know we've got some kind of help there and I'll shape that a bit better when it gets a little bit more cured here we need to now just make sure we've got that back where we want it so I think this has moved a little that's it that's how you want it like that so that's going to be there So it's going to be there, there we go, like so, and we're just going to mark that, spatula it on and be done with it. Um, I've just, yeah, so I've just, just, I've not got a pen, I thought I brought a pen with me. I'm just going to make, move that here, just to mark that corner off like that. And one of the best things for epoxy to stick to is other epoxy, especially if you've sanded it ready. I'm gonna give that a good old dollop, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. One thing I've gotta do is, is these screws. So I'm gonna try and find out which screws are still okay and which screws we might need to redo uh, while we're doing some epoxying we could just redo some of these holes that have got big too big so these two seem to be okay these two I think are okay watch that right 
Right. There we go. Wait. Jury's out on this seal, to be honest with you. But that'll need to come off. And then you can see these have actually got roll plugs in them at the moment. Look at these. I mean, they're just rubbish. Look at that. We just need to fiberglass these holes. So I'm going to put a bit of fiberglass under there, under them. Hopefully, fill these holes up. plugs out. Oh yeah, I mean they're just knackered. I'm going to chop a little bit of this into this cup. And just sort of chop it up a little bit. There you go. And then I've got this little brush, whoop, there we go. Hopefully this is gonna be okay. And then we're gonna see, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. We're gonna first of all fill these holes. It doesn't have to look super duper pretty, does it? Because we're, we're actually, you know, it's all covered over. And then we can just sort of shove these in a bit and make this hole a little bit closer, hopefully. I don't know, that's the general idea anyway, although I don't think this has chopped up as much as I thought it was. Well, we'll see what that does. And this one, Really, we only need this to keep it in place. So actually, if we put a bit of epoxy on here, try and wet that out. It's gonna be really messy with the old hands, this is. So we're gonna wet this through. Oh, hello! <laughs> And we're going to shove that in there. Hopefully that will create a little base. Haha, -ha. there we go. Right, there we go. Clean them up. Got a bit of 404 in there as well. And hopefully that will... Well, we'll put new holes in there tomorrow when it's cured. And hopefully that will... Um, that will be able, we'll be able to tighten the screws up properly in there. Touch wood. It's all looking good. I put a little bit of 404 over down there, just for a little, few little bumps and gaps around there. So, you know, hopefully that will cure. This is cured now. So we're gonna just do this siliconing down here. May as well do that now so that can cure overnight. And then that's, we've only got a couple more things to do today and that'll be that. I just noticed, look how rusty this is from the salt water, my word. So we'll put this little cap in that we made. There you go, it does work, doesn't it? Okay. And then... There we go, try and seal that all the way up. So that's a fairly strong fairy liquid solution and then you can just sort of do this without it sticking to you. Just make sure that is all squeezed in. There we go. That's one hard day's work. Uh, really feel, I think I'm feeling a little bit ill, that's why. We've got this cover on, should keep her nice and sort of discreet. Um. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, 
we're all packed up, ready to go. I'm just gonna get the tow bar off and then we'll go and get something to eat.